Hey everyone, in today's video, we're diving into Flux1 Context Deb, a 12 billion parameter image editing model from creator of Flux. Flux Context is an advanced AI model that allows users to generate and edit images using both text and images as input. It supports multi-step edits, such as removing objects or changing the environment while keeping the original style and character details consistent. Flux Context is available in three versions, Pro, Max, and Dev version. In this video, we're going to be testing the Dev version locally in Comfy UI, as it is completely free to run it locally, whereas Pro and Max version is available in only the API format, and you have to pay for individual generation of the image. We're going to be using the FP8 version of the context dev model, and the recommended VRAM for this is 16 gigabyte to run the workflow fast and efficiently. But I have seen some people running this on 8 gigabyte VRAM and it does seem to be possible. If you aren't able to run this locally on your machine, I've also prepared a runpod template for you to run this on the cloud and test it out. The link for the runpod template is in the description below. I would recommend you to use either the RTX A5000 or RTX 3090. RTX 3090 would probably be a little bit faster, but it is a little bit more expensive. Using RunPod for this workflow is the cheapest way to run Comfy UI in the cloud if you aren't able to run this locally. RunPod will set up the container and this part will take a little bit of time. In this part, it will try to download the Docker image that I created for the Comfy UI environment. After it loads up the container, it will then download all the correct models and custom nodes that are required for this workflow. This part will take a little bit of time. You can see the progress of the downloads by clicking the logs button and see all the downloads happening in the log. Once the container is ready, if you click connect, you'll see that HTTP port 3000 is available to connect. You can then click this button to load up Comfy UI in RunPod. And I believe in the log section, it should say syncing Comfy UI. Once you're in Comfy UI, you can then either drag and drop the workflow. And if that lags a little bit, you can directly open this by clicking the open button and then click the workflow.json that you downloaded from the GitHub link. Compared to GPT-40 in terms of image editing, Flux Context maintains strong character and style consistency across multiple edits. The strength of Flux Context is that it's able to make changes just to the areas of interest without totally redrawing the scene, unlike GPT-40. So it's able to maintain the original consistency of the character much better than other models. Let's first dive into the Comfy UI workflow and see how we can use this model. You can download the workflow from the GitHub link that is linked in the description below. Once you download the workflow, you can drag and drop it into the Comfy UI interface. The workflow is divided into groups so that you can more easily understand. First, we're loading the images here that will be passed to Flux Context model for editing. For the input images, you can use multiple images by stitching them together with the image stitch node. You can see how this looks in the preview node when the workflow runs. Or if you just want to use a single image, you can delete the connection by clicking the connection and deleting the line. The Flux Context Image Scale node in the Comfy White workflow is used to resize or scale an input image before it enters the Flux Context pipeline. This step ensures that the image dimensions are compatible with the model's processing requirements, particularly when dealing with the latent encoding and in-context editing. We're using the model loading nodes to load the appropriate Flux Context model and the clip models here. For all the model download link, you can see the link in the free Patreon page that I linked in the description below. The main model we're using here is the Flux Context FP8 model, and you want to put this in the Diffusion Model folder. The other clip models and the vein model is the same as other Flux workflow. You want to download the clip models and put this in the clip folder and the vein model inside the vein folder. If you scroll more to the right, there's a prompt section. This is where the Flux context will get the instructions to edit your image. There are a couple of tips you can refer to for better editing instructions. This is from the native Comfy UI Flux Context Guides in the Comfy UI's official site. For basic modification of the image, you want to be simple and direct, like change the car color to red. If you do want to emphasize on maintaining the style of the original image, you want to say while maintaining the same style of the painting. There are some other tips like style transfer and maintaining a better character consistency and changing the text in the image. And if you scroll down a little more, there are some tips on what you shouldn't do in terms of prompting. I won't go through this in too much detail, but you can read over it to improve your prompt. One thing I like to do in terms of prompting is I like copying the
these techniques and put it over to GPT-40 and instruct ChatGPT to give me a better prompt by giving it a basic prompt and instructing GPT-40 to create me a improved version of the prompt. After you enter the prompt, the models and the prompt goes to the K sampler for the final output. And then the image is decoded for the final image section here. I've also included the upscale and the face detailer sections, but I have bypassed them for now. But you can undo this by right clicking the group and clicking bypass again to run it with the upscaler. For now, I've connected the final image to the input image of the upscale node, but you can also load the image separately and run the specific node by right-clicking and run. And same thing applies to the face detailer section as well. You can undo the bypass by right-clicking and clicking bypass, and then you just feed in the image to the input image to the node. Let's dive into testing the flux context model and see what image we can produce. First, I'm going to use this image of a girl that I produced with the Realistic Flux workflow. If you want to learn how to produce realistic images like this, you can refer to my previous video on how to create realistic images with ultra real fine-tuned model of Flux. I'm going to use this image to change this girl's outfit to a red dress. I initially created the prompt, changed the woman's outfit to a bright red dress, keeping her facial features, hairstyle, and pose exactly the same. And this is the result that I got. The girl's outfit is changed to a red dress. The time it takes to run this workflow is about 60 seconds on my RTX 3090. The face and the style of the image is consistent with the original image as well. You can also see that the face, unlike GPT-40, is very consistent. And this is because Flux Context is able to only change the specific area of the interest, and that is the outfit portion of the person. In the next prompt, I'm going to try to change the angle of the face. And the prompt I'm going to input is show the same woman from a left side view, keeping her hairstyle, red dress, and facial features exactly the same. I should have gotten rid of the word red dress, but in the result, I got an image of a woman with the side view with the same outfit as the original image. Compared to the original image, the face is pretty consistent and the realism and the style of the face is very similar to the original image as well. With the use of Flux Context, you can also use this model to create consistent characters by training the LoRa's with the generated images from this workflow. I was planning to release on how to create consistent characters by training your own LoRa's, but with the release of Flux Context, I'm planning to change my tutorial a little bit on creating consistent faces and poses easily and efficiently. So I'll be working on that for my future video. In the next generation, I'm going to try to remove an object from the original image. I had this realistic image of an orange cat wearing a military helmet, and I'm going to try to remove the helmet from the cat. I used the prompt remove the hat from the orange cat while keeping the cat's fur, color, expression, and pose exactly the same. After waiting about 60 seconds, this is the result that I got. In the resulting image, I got a cat without the military helmet, and the Flux Context did a pretty good job extending the image. In this generation, I'm going to try to change the style of the image to a Ghibli style. This is the original image of a girl holding a sign subscribed to AI Robust. For the prompt, I used change the image to Ghibli animation style, keeping the character's pose, expression, and background layout exactly the same. And in the resulting image, I got an image of a person in Ghibli style. The text on the sign is not changed, and it accurately created the image. In this next test, I'm going to try to change the text on the sign to Hello, this is Flux Context. The prompt that I used is replace the text on the sign with Hello, this is Flux Context, keeping the font style, size, and sign position exactly the same. And the result is pretty good on here as well. It does a really good job on changing the text, and there is no error. I've also went ahead and try to see if it works on anime style images as well. I have this original image of an anime girl and for the prompt I'm going to say make the anime girl hold and play an electric guitar while keeping her pose, facial expression, and outfit the same. And this is the resulting output. In Flux Context, you can also combine different images and stitch them together. This combined image can then be used for the input image, and with the prompt, you can create a very interesting output. For example, I have this image of a girl and a bag. For the prompt, I use the woman on the left is holding a bag from the right. When I run the workflow, you can see the stitched images inside the preview node here. However, one thing you need to make sure before using the workflow is that you set the correct aspect ratio on the Flux Resolution Calc node. 
This is because as you see in the combined image, the width is too large and the output image will follow the original combined images width and height as well. If you want your output to let's say uh, aspect ratio of a portrait, then you can set the aspect ratio on the flux resolution calc and connect the latent of the empty latent image node to the K sampler node. If you want your width and height resolution to be the same as the combined input images, then you can just use the latent of the combined image. Swap out these latent inputs as you want. After testing Flux Context, it really does an amazing job at editing images, and I hope you are able to try this one as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back with more AI contents. If you have any questions on setting up the Flux Context, please join the Discord channel and ask questions there. Thanks a lot for watching.